Hello everyone, welcome back again. This is Jesse, and then in this tutorial, we'll be talking about we'll be trying to make a machine learning app, right? With with Flux, which is going to help us predict or detect whether a YouTube comment is a spam or is not a spam, right? So for example, let's try something like a great song. Check this great song, right? Something like that, but check this out. So we're trying to predict whether it's a a ham or it's a spam, right? So this is spam. So this is trying to tell us that this comment is a spam. So let's go back again and try something different. Let's make it like cool song. Perfect. So not a spam, it's a ham. Okay, so now you try and build a framework, then we try and build a model which we'll be using to do the prediction, and then we build the front end with the flags, right? Okay, so let's see how to do that. So this is the main data that we're using. You can just get the data from UCI, UCI machine learning. So let's start. So be using import pandas as, as PD and then import numpy. Then we'll be using feature extraction from sklearn and then count vectorizer. It's going to count the frequency, then term, term frequency and inverse division frequency. We're going to count the test and then, and then convert them into vectors, right? To be able to use it more because in machine learning, it's supposed to be numerical, it's supposed to be numbers. You can't just work with this. So these are what we're doing. So these are data from this website, UCI Machine Learning. We have some data sets there. So we'll be working for each and every of them. So there are several packages. There are several uh, files, data. And then this is how it is. So we'll be trying to convert all of these things. Well, right. So they are, this is specific for each of, each of them. So let's try. It's about five different data sets so we'll be merging them with this and then i'm going to merge them in this one so frames go to df1 df2 df3 df3 i'm going to merge them together so that you have a bigger data set right so I'll con then after that pdf dot con 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 cut or concatenate frames right yeah concatenating this entire thing together so after that if i check the merge it's going to print it perfectly for us so merging all of them so if you check for the size of it Let's check for the size. If you check for the shape and the size, you're going to realize that that's just far bigger than the previous one. Okay. So now we try and make them with keys so that it becomes easy for us to manipulate. So we are using PC, PCI, Katy Perry, LMFO, MNM Shakira. So these are the actual names. And then to calculate them with the keys. So if you check back with the keys, it's going to give it PCI, right? You see that there is PCI here. And there's one for the rest, right? Okay. So now let's try and see whether we can use this to use the keys that you created with to be able to make it easier to find some. So we're using Shakira, and then when you try that, it's going to fetch all the Shakira. So that is the main idea and the purpose of the keys. So now we can write them all into a particular format. So df with keys, then dot to CSV. We're going to convert them to CSV, right? So let me call it one because I've already I already have it there. Let me see. Okay, it's not this, so we can just use it. Okay. Then to convert them to that. So if I check here, it's here, right? It's, it has been made perfectly. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create the DF and then we're going to work on the size, which is normal. So we can just check for the data cleaning. Okay, check for the column name so that it's consistent, which we which there's a video on it on how to do that. All of them are capital is consistent you can check with the data, data types and then object 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 so you must be, know how to convert some of them but because we'll be using only the comments the content and then the class these things may not be very important the dates may be important but you'll be just working on these two so we just move away straight away to convert them so you can can check for missing numbers with this df is no dot is no dot sum and it's working perfectly there is no missing data now if you check with the date the date is, is in its right format which is okay but because we'll not be using it you'll not be concentrating more on it won't you we just want to build the stuff right so we can just use this format to split it right but we are not be we will not be doing that today we'll not be splitting them today because that's not what is important now now let's work with what is important now let's see how to build our model itself so to build our model 
using this working with test so df underscore data then df so we are be, we're using the column content in a class so we have been putting a new different data frame and then when we check for that it's going to create content which is going to be our features and then the class which is going to be our target or our label so df underscore s for our features and then df underscore y for our labels so we'll be using count vectorizer to extract so to do that it's just going to be, let's try a brief idea of how the count vectorizer works so you initialize it with cf it's called count, count vectorizer remember that we imported it from sklearn test from sklearn dot feature extraction dot test so that's where we imported it from And then so we're going to fit it and then transform it right combination of the two so you are going to pass it inside this storm so great song but check this out or what is this one it's going to convert them into vectors so when we check the arrays it's going to print them into, into numbers so this is how it's that's actually vectorized all of these things perfectly so that we can work on them right so if you want to get the features just use cv.get so it's, these are the main feature names right Okay, perfect now we can apply the same concept on the entire data set so remember that our latest our content was equated to df.s which is going to be our features and you are storing it as corpus right corpus means body and then you're applying the count vectorizer on it to transform this entire data to fit and then transform the entire corpus right data for our features so if you check for our features it's going to list several of them as arrays so that you can now work on them then we can also check for the feature names perfectly. It's just going to give us several data sets. Now let's build our model. So we're going to go with from sklearn.model import. There's one nice feature of our data I want to show, which is this, right? You can do this, right? From sklearn. And then when you tap on it, now this uh, Jupyter Lab gives you the option of how do we call it? Auto complete. So if I do this, Start giving us a tab completion, which is very very nice for the uh, Jupyter Lab. So you can just select whatever I want. So model selection, and then import train. Now it's going to give us auto completion, which is very very nice. Okay, so that's something I just wanted to show. Okay, so we're doing that. So we're extracting it, and then we're using this one to 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 train, test, and split. Right, so we're going to split our data set and then train. Split into training and then testing with this feature. So the S is for our arrays from the features that we had, and the DF is for our class, right? If you remember, so if you check for it again, it's going to print it perfectly for us. It has worked as pass matrix. Now let's use a naive base classifier, which is very useful when you are working with test classification. Okay, so be using that one. So from sklearn.naive underscore base bias imports multinomial naive base, right? So you instantiate it, you fit it with our training and then our, our training data set for our features and then for our labels and apply the same thing for our scores. So when you try that, you realize that the frequency, the accuracy is 0 0.91, which if you convert it to percentage is going to be give us 91.95%, which is a very good model. So having a good model like that, we can save it and then use it for our application. So let's predict our model with something else with the S test. And it's going to predict it perfectly for us. Zero for zero and then one, right? This is going to be for spam and then for half. So now let's check something. So to let's try an example. So we'll be doing a sample prediction. So I'm giving a comment of check this out. And then I'm passing that comment with SV for the count vector. Transform them into vectors and then to convert them into uh, numbers to arrays, right? So that's the purpose of this. And then I'm going to predict with the classification that is a naive base classifier, and then it's going to give us that the prediction is one. So one is for spam and then zero for harm. So that is the meaning of this. So if I check it again, this is not important anyway. So I can just use that if this is just a normal condition that either prediction is equal to one, print harm, print spam, if or else print harm, right? That is the main idea behind it. Okay, so we can try it on a different song. So comment one, so great song. And then which song friend or we can use something different and if you check it it's going to work perfectly for us telling that it is what a ha not a spam okay 
so now we can see this model there's a video on how to save it so using you can import pkl then you save it as this right youtube so uh, save it with this name open and then save it with right byte then you can dump it together you can dump the classification and then into this knife into this file here and then we can close it right so perfect you can also load it and then use it perfectly so this is the main idea for it so it's, it's going to save it perfectly and then we can load it and then use it well right so now this is the main idea about it you have understood the concept about the the model itself how it's going to work so let's build our actual app right we're going to be building this app so let's